Is ChatGPT all you need to plan your trip to Iceland and can it be trusted? Let's find out. Hi, my name is Carl. I'm a native Icelander. What should I pack for my one week trip in June? Keep the answers to four sentences or less. We don't want to be here all day. For a one week trip to Iceland in June, you should pack warm, waterproof clothing, including a rain jacket and waterproof hiking boots. Layers are important as the weather can change quickly. Sunscreen and sunglasses are also important as the days are long and the sun is strong. Don't forget a camera to capture the stunning scenery. You may very well become the first person in history to get a sunburn from the midnight sun, but it's not a bad idea to slap on some SPF 8 during the day just in case. Otherwise this answer is okay, but it's quite incomplete. And it wasted precious sentences warning you about the midnight sun and to remind you to bring a camera, which is not something you'd wear. 6 out of 10. Do I need to carry cash in Iceland? While it's not necessary to carry cash in Iceland, it is a good idea to have some on hand as some smaller businesses such as cafes and souvenir shops may not accept credit or debit cards. However, most places in Iceland do accept credit cards and you can also withdraw Icelandic currency from the ATMs. Just make sure you inform your bank that you're traveling to Iceland so they don't block your card for suspicious activity. I very much doubt that there are cafes and restaurants that don't accept cards in Iceland. However, there are some campsites, tourist attractions and drug dealers who might ask for cash. Is Iceland safe? Yes, Iceland is generally a safe country to visit. The crime rate is low and the country is known for its peaceful and friendly atmosphere. However, like any destination, visitors should exercise common sense and take precautions such as not leaving valuables unattended, staying aware of the surroundings and following any safety guidelines provided by local authorities. It's also important to be aware of the weather conditions and potential natural hazards such as flash floods or snowstorms especially if you plan to travel outside the urban areas. I would not recommend you go out on the town after about 2 a.m. in Reykjavik. You probably won't get robbed or killed, but your chances of getting punched in the face are quite high. Especially if you have one of those punchable faces. And you don't really need to worry about a snowstorm in June, but the answer is quite good, so 7 out of 10. What are the chances that I will get attacked by a polar bear in Iceland? The chances of being attacked by a polar bear in Iceland are extremely low. In fact, there are no polar bears native to Iceland as the country is located too far south for polar bears to live there. The only polar bears in Iceland are those in captivity, such as at the Reykjavik Zoo. However, visitors to Iceland should be aware of the potential risks associated with the country's natural environment, such as volcanic activity, strong winds and cold temperatures. The reason polar bears don't live in Iceland has much more to do with them getting shot as soon as they arrive here than anything else. And Reykjavik's zoo has never never had the polar bear. It barely even qualifies as a zoo. 5 out of 10. Please create an itinerary for my one week trip in June. Day 1. Arrive in Reykjavik, the capital city of Iceland. Spend the day exploring the city and its landmarks, such as Hallgrimskirkja Church and the Harpa Concert Hall. Visit the famous Blue Lagoon for a relaxing soak in a geothermal spa. So you don't arrive in Reykjavik, you arrive in Keflavik, which is about 40 minutes away from Reykjavik. And the Blue Lagoon is on the way from the airport, so it would make much more sense to go to the Blue Lagoon first on the way from the airport, you silly machine you. Head to the Golden Circle, a popular tourist route that includes Tinkvellir National Park, the Geysir Geothermal Airport, area and Goodfoss waterfall. This is an excellent suggestion when heading south, and there are other great stops along the way. You could even stop here and pay a few bucks to stare at the hole in the ground. Take a drive along the south coast of Iceland, stopping at the black sand beaches of Reynisfjara and the town of Vík. Visit the Skóafoss and Seljalandsfoss waterfalls and explore the Skaftafell National Park. So this is all out of order. Seljalandsfoss comes first, then Skóafoss and then Vík. Make sure you don't miss Gljúrabúi right next to Seljalandsfoss. Explore the Jökulsárlón Glacier Lagoon where you can see icebergs floating in the water and take a boat tour to get up close. Drive through the East Fjords and stop at the charming town of Eirstadir. The drive from Jökulsárlón to Eirstadir is very long. I did not tell ChatGTP that we wanted to do the full circle, but that's what I decided that we should do. And doing the full circle in a week is doable, but you will inevitably spend most of your trip driving. Visit the Mývatnerja, which is known for its unique geothermal features, including mudpads, steam vents and the Naumifjall geothermal area. Also check out the Dettefoss waterfall. You might get eaten by midges, but yeah, excellent suggestion. Drive through the northern region of Iceland and visit the charming town of Akureyri. Explore the botanical gardens and visit Akureyri Church. Realistically, you don't really need a full day in Akureyri. You don't really need a full minute there. Head back to Reykjavik, stopping at the Kvalfjörður Fjörds for stunning views. Spend the day exploring Reykjavik or take whale watching tours. End the day with a delicious Icelandic dinner in the city. So it wants you to drive for almost six hours and do a whale watching tour. I would suggest you rather not waste your time looking at the church in Akureyri and go to Húsavík instead on day six for a 
or whale watching tour. Then you spend the rest of your day making your way towards Reykjavik to explore the sites along the way. But overall, this isn't a bad itinerary, but you're gonna need more than a week if you're gonna get the most out of your driving the full circle in my opinion. So this itinerary gets 6 out of 10. What activities should I book? The Blue Lagoon. Relax in the famous geothermal spa, which is known for its milky blue waters and rejuvenating properties. So it really wants you to go to the Blue Lagoon. There are many different lagoons all around the country that didn't take taxpayers' money during COVID and pay its shareholder billions in dividends. I have a whole playlist of videos on lagoons I suggest you check out. Glacier hiking. Take a guided tour to explore Iceland's glaciers, such as Vatnajökull or Skaftafjall, and experience the stunning ice formations and landscapes. Yeah, why not? I haven't done that yet. I will someday, although I am not not going to hike, I'll take a massive truck or a snowmobile, thank you very much. And of course, I'll make a video about it, so make sure you subscribe. Northern Light Hunting. Join a tour to see the spectacular Aurora Borealis lighting up the night's sky. You don't really need a tour to go see the Northern Lights, especially not in June. You can just go out by yourself and not see them, because, you know, it's June. You have a better chance of getting a midnight sunburn than seeing the Northern Lights. Whale watching. Take a boat tour to see the whales and dolphins in the natural habitat, including humpback whales, orcas and mink whales. I really love going whale watching. I made a whole video on it. I suggest you watch after this one if you're considering whale watching tour. Hot spring tours. Visit the natural hot springs around Iceland, such as the Secret Lagoon or the Mivat Nature Baths for a relaxing yeah. soak in the warm waters. Coming to Iceland and not visiting a hot spring is like going to Paris and not visiting the Lourdes, or going to Rome and not visiting the Colosseum, or going to Amsterdam and not getting hurt. Snorkeling or diving. Explore the underwater world of Silvra Fisher, located at Tingvetter National Park, where you can see some of the clearest waters in the world. Oh, I'd really love to try that. Silvra is stunning. Look how clear that water is. Horseback riding. Take a ride on the unique Icelandic horse, which is known for its sturdy build and five gates. Be my guest. Horses are stupid. I'm not doing that. This answer is great. It would be 10 out of 10 if it hadn't suggested horses and hiking, so, you know, 9 out of 10. So overall, I think you can use ChatGPT to plan your trip. Just make sure that you do further research into the answers before you pay good money for a ticket to a disappointing zoo with zero polar bears. While I was planning this video, I got some really interesting suggestions, like dining out at a restaurant called Stuver. That restaurant does not exist. It has never existed. Have you used ChatGPT to plan your trip? Let me know in the comments how it went. And have a great trip!